It doesn't get any better than this. Championship Wednesday in Division II softball. We have reached the final games or game of the 2023 season, and we are ready to hand out a trophy here this afternoon. Jim Frost Stadium, when they built it about 25 years ago, there's a beautiful plaque outside that says this is the stadium that has a field of a thousand dreams. We are gonna make somebody's dream come true this afternoon. Grand Valley State, the Lakers from Allendale, Michigan, and the North Georgia Nighthawks from Dahlonega, Georgia. Who's gonna win the national championship here this afternoon? I'm Brendan Gulick along with Leah Secondo. Get you caught up on how these two teams got to this day. Of course, North Georgia and Grand Valley State played the opening game in this best of three yesterday. Lydia Goebel got things started for Grand Valley. Looked like they were going to get off on the right foot, Leah, but they just couldn't keep these North Georgia bats at bay. No, you know, it was like counterpunch, punch, counterpunch, punch, much of we, what we expected. Even the intangibles got into play a little bit with the sun factoring in. And with these two teams being as strong as they are, they're going to take advantage of every little tweak that's made on the field, a little faux pas to get that extra run across. I thought that both teams responded in those moments. I uh, was a little bit surprised at how Hannah Beatis got rocked a little bit, but she is a woman that is on a mission. They'll have to peel that ball out of her hand in order to be taken out of the game. She wants redemption to force game three today against North Georgia. Grand Valley State is, is going to go as far as Hannah and Lydia Goebel can take them, that's for sure. They've showcased some depth, but there's no denying that those are their two foremost leaders. On the North Georgia side, frankly, it's the depth of their pitching staff that might be most impressive because Kristen Davis is going to get the ball today, but Tybee Denton and Sophie Mooney have been terrific this week. Yeah, they, they have. They uh, have, for, for North Georgia, no doubt about it, this is the deepest pitching staff that they have had in a long, long time. And that, for uh, Mike Davenport, has allowed him, when things have started to see, well, they're getting to our bats to make some changes. I would expect the very same thing today, but I think we might see Mooney in that second position if something goes awry with Davis. Davis has pitched twice this week and over 10 and two thirds innings has given up just three runs on seven hits. She's been very solid. So we'll see if Grand Valley State can get to the Nighthawks early in this one. It's another spectacular day, 79 degrees and sunny skies overhead. North Georgia, the 2015 national champs. Grand Valley State has never won the national title. Can't wait to get this thing started. In the meantime, let's go to the public address system where we will carry our national anthem. As we honor our great nation and the men and women serving our country at home and abroad, we ask that you please rise if able and remove your hats. And now, the playing of our national anthem. What a beautiful sight as we get ready to crown a national champion here this afternoon. This is going to be a very memorable day for either North Georgia or Grand Valley State. In a good way, of course, though, there will probably be some tears by the end of the day for the team that ultimately falls 
just a little short of their goal. But both these two teams have been unbelievable in tournament play. Um, you know, Leah, it's, it's not just a matter of getting hot at the right time. That's certainly a part of it. These two squads have championship DNA, and they've shown it all year long. Well, and I think that's a real thing. You know, looking at the records, right, that went up as we started the broadcast, um, you know, you're, you're almost going into 70, 71 games today, and it's over a short period of time. It all starts back on that first week of February getting together, and you hope that the path leads here. And it's just, it's so hard to get here once, uh, let, let alone twice, and just the standard that these two programs have set to be a part of it. Grand Valley State obviously trying to win their first, to be so special for them. And for North Georgia, they've gotten a taste of it. No question about it. A little bit more of a home partial crowd today for them. But all these fans are extremely appreciative of the game of softball. Hannah Biotis, just a terrific pitcher. She's going to take the ball for Grand Valley State. 30-2 and two this year. The second loss came yesterday. Her ERA on the season, .88. There are few pitchers anywhere in the country that are quite as good as Hannah Biotis. Let's get a, a look quickly at the North Georgia batting order. The top of their order has been pretty productive for them. Maddie Perry hasn't had a lot of hits, but she's found herself on base a lot through walks. Olivia Sinkfield was clutch yesterday with three RBIs. Sydney Blair and Mariah Wicker had the two uh, hits that blew the game open, but certainly Mooney and Forehand are uh, bats you can't ignore. They are two of the four RBI leaders in Division II softball here this year. Georgia Blair was clutch yesterday as well. We are just about ready to go. National Championship Day, the final day of Division II athletics anywhere around the country. Well, I should say at least on the ladies' side. <laughs> We've got the uh, Division II baseball tournament coming up in Cary, North Carolina still. But on the ladies' side, this will be the final day of competition here in 2023. Joe Lee Lester leading things off for the Nighthawks, who only need to win once. Grand Valley State needs to sweep a doubleheader. First pitch, 12-01, and we are off and rolling. Ross Stadium at Warner Park. Again, 79 degrees and sunny. It is just perfect for the seventh day in a row here in Chattanooga. Weather has been basically an afterthought this week. A little bit of a breeze moving from right to left, perhaps a little bit out toward left field, but not, uh, not a ton of wind at the moment. Probably won't affect anything if the flag continues to move just that lightly. Lester fouls one away. Before we set the defense, give me an idea what you saw from Beatis yesterday and where she can be better today. Well, I think she can be better if she's able to paint the corners on, on the outside. There were many pitches that I think, based on the zone a little bit yesterday, it forced her to kind of put balls towards the, the meatier part of the plate. Uh, and, and these hitters from North Georgia were able to tap into that. Lester cuts and misses. Uh, maybe just got a, a piece of it there, nothing in two. The umpires changing game by game, so an entirely new crew here for the second game in this potential three-game series. Stacy Newton has the plate, Perry Owens at first, and Destiny Robinson umpiring down at third base. Gladys misses outside. Jolie Lester, just a freshman. She's had unbelievable experience during her freshman year after Mallory Parker went down with an injury, and Jolie's been terrific. Waves over the top of it for strike three. Lester's glove in particular has been her staple. In fact, she won a gold glove this year as the best left fielder in the country. Speaking of defense, here's how the Lakers go at it. Outfield, left to right, Hannah Hollister, Caitlin Lynch, and Joanna Cerincione. Around the diamond, third to first, Megan Kenigshoff, Lydia Goble, Morgan Spicer, and Kelsey Camoris. Morgan Wagner catching Hannah Biotis. Once again, Maddie Perry stands in. And again, Perry hasn't really found a lot of success this week if you're talking about base hits. But she's done an excellent job of just figuring out how to get on base. And a lot of that has shown a good eye at the plate. Perry is 0 for 8 this week with seven walks. And she scored five runs. See, and I love that. She's 0 for 8, but with the seven walks. That just goes to show that you're being disciplined at the plate. You're looking for any way to get on. You understand your strike zone. Yes, you've had 
uh, no hits. But a couple of those balls she hit on the beeline pretty good. Absolutely. Joanna Serencioni has walked three times. Nobody else in the entire tournament field of all eight teams, nobody else has walked more than twice. So Perry's been really good at working the pitcher. Piatis misses the zone there. And not to mention, Perry you know, has had a really good season offensively at 376. It's not like she's not capable. But sometimes you just got to take what the game gives you. And North Georgia's trying to get runners on base for the thump in their order. One hopper right back to the circle. Beatus takes care of it. Base is empty. Two outs for the very dangerous Sophie Mooney. Unquestionably one of the best hitters in the field this week. She's got a tournament high 10 base hits. 10 for 16 with a home run and five RBI. That home run was a big one. It came in the national semifinals when North Georgia crept past Texas Tyler. Mooney on the ground right side. Camorris takes it herself, and it's a pretty routine one, two, three, top of the first. No score. The Lakers will come to bat, try to strike first in this win or lose the national championship game. Grand Valley State going to work offensively against a terrific pitcher in Kristen Davis. As we take a look at the Laker batting order, led off by Caitlin Lynch, Joanna Serencioni, and unquestionably one of the biggest offensive threats in the country, Lydia Goebel. And for Lydia Goebel, uh, a player that certainly has been set up at the right times, but those best players that are set up at the right times, Brendan, with runners in scoring position, and nowhere to put her. She has even responded with authority for this Laker team. Megan Kenningshoff out of the nine holes also been terrific. Seven for 14 this week, so they can flip the lineup over and generally have something cooking. Caitlin Lynch has had a little bit of a tough week offensively, three for 17, but she had one of the biggest moments of the week for sure. One of those three hits was a game-winning walk-off single to center field. Punched Grand Valley State's ticket to this best of three. Tries to bunt her way aboard. Good defense from the Nighthawks for out number one. Yeah, definitely forehand coming over. And I love the way she's covering that ball with her other hand to protect it. Jolie Lester in left. Sydney Blair in center. Mariah Wicker in right. Racing Mixon at the hot corner. Maddie Perry the shortstop. And a forehand. Second baseman next to Olivia Sinkfield at first. And Georgia Blair catches. Kristen Davis. Davis is 19 and one this season with a 2.13 earned run average. She's thrown 125 innings for the Nighthawks with 137 strikeouts. She gives up about two hits every three innings on average. Serencioni looked like she was a little flat-footed as she ran down that first baseline. And it was a relatively easy play for Maddie Perry. Two outs. I would imagine both of these two teams are, I don't know if I would call it nerves, but there's some adrenaline, yeah, right? There's, yeah, there's adrenaline flowing, and, and when we talked to Coach Calhoun last night at the hotel, she was telling us she thought her team was a little tight getting off the bus yesterday, so made sure to change that. They discussed it yesterday after the game, made sure to change it up a little with a little ice cream on the way back to the hotel last night, and uh, feels as though this team has so much veteran leadership that the uh, new day, new dawn, and uh, new thought process getting off the bus this morning. Lydia Goble takes outside. One ball and one strike to one of the all-time great Grand Valley State offensive weapons. This young lady has almost made a joke of the stat book. She's put up numbers that few will ever replicate in the history of their program. And... Grand Valley State, there's an element to their team. When you look at the top of the order, Lynch, Serencioni, Goble, and the catcher, Morgan Wagner, the cleanup hitter, along with Hannah Beatis, they are a senior heavy leadership team. Alexis McCullough has been in as a pinch runner a lot this week. 
As Goble flies one, carrying a bit to right, and Wicker pulls up on the track to make the catch. There's a lot of feeling with the Lakers that this is their time to try to make this happen. One inning complete. Neither team with a hit early on, and we're settling in at Chattanooga. Fourth, wasn't it? Well, over the last several seasons, you could make an argument, regardless of what the records are around the country, there are no two programs that have been more regularly on this stage than Grand Valley State and North Georgia. But in all of their prior appearances, neither of these two teams have actually gotten into this best of three finals since North Georgia last did it in uh, 2015. Nighthawks have been here now three straight years in the national tournament. And Grand Valley State in their sixth ever and third in the last four Division II College World Series. I think there's a lot to be said for experience. When you get here, you got to know how to handle it. Yeah, you totally have to know how to handle it. It's a whole different brand of a week. You know, it's kind of crazy. We've been here a week. But that there's a whole preparedness in that. And you try to keep things as simple for the student athletes as possible. But at the same token... You want to put them on this special stage and make them feel special all week. And I guarantee you from what has transpired between the lines all the way back to the hotels and then pre-prep for them traveling here, they have been made to feel as special as they should be in this setting. Forehand, Sinkfield and Blair, middle three in the Nighthawk order as Beatis gets out in front of Hannah, 0-2. Grand Valley State. 20 years ago was the national runner-up. Just missed off the plate. That's the only other time they have been in a position to win a national championship in softball. North Georgia, 2015 national champions when this tournament was held in Oklahoma City. Forehand skies one. This is very playable behind shortstop. And the center fielder Lynch calls off Goble, makes the catch. One out, good communication there. And so Olivia Sinkfield stands in. What a day for her yesterday. Olivia hadn't been exactly on fire mm -hmm. this tournament, and yesterday stepped up with a two-run single in the first inning that tied the game at two, and then she had an RBI single later in the game that tied it at three. And, and I think, it, again, benefiting from the way the strike zone is. If you watch these players, they're constantly talking to uh, each other, especially in the early stages of the game, as to where pitches are being called, what's being thrown, what consecutive pitches are being thrown, where are they being thrown to. And there's good students of the game, game day and non-game day, off the field, at the hotel, watching videos, so that they can try to pick up anything that might possibly help them in the box and is one of the veteran leaders of this team who's playing in her final game ever today by the time the day is finished in Sinkfield. She took advantage of that. Smoke through the box. Space hit Sydney Blair. Two out single right up the middle. It was Blair's two-run triple yesterday that put the Nighthawks out front for the first time. A lead they would not relinquish, and she is this afternoon's first base runner. Now Mariah Wicker, who cracked her 12th home run of the season right after that two-run triple. Part of a five-run fifth that blew it open for the Nighthawks. Wicker takes a called strike. So much of succeeding on a tournament stage is about figuring out how you can have clutch, timely hits. Wicker on the week is two for 11, but that home run is a memory she'll never forget. Cuts right through it, nothing and two. North Georgia also yesterday left the bases loaded in the third inning. In fact, they had the bases loaded, nobody out. And at that point, it kind of felt like maybe it wasn't going to be their day. I was so impressed with the way they stuck with it. Upstairs, one and two. 
By the way, in case you're interested, all games played this week in Chattanooga are archived in full on NCAA.com. So if you're interested in watching back any of the week, it's pretty easy to do. Wicker evens the count two and two. There's also been highlight recaps posted to kind of wrap up each day of the tournament, and we will have one at the end of the day today, whether that includes one or two games worth of conversation. Runner breaks, pitch is fouled off. Blair 19 of 22 stealing bases this year, 86%. North Georgia, I mean, their DNA is get on base and make you frustrated defensively because they can all run. Yeah, they're going to push the envelope. Anything that's on the ground, they're going to look to to make that extra base. So you better make sure you know where your cuts are, you know where you're going with balls uh, because they are going to push the envelope every single time. Wicker got a piece of it. Biotis, high throw, safe. Camorris' foot apparently came off the bag. An error on Beatis. Two on with two out. Just a slow roller enough, an almost bunt style. Hannah Beatis good at fielding her position when this one kind of flares away. And yes, no doubt about it, Wicker speed getting down the path. The perception of where the ball went to save it from going awry. And now runners in scoring position with two outs. Great call. Two on, two out for Georgia Blair. How does Hannah Beatis work around the first small jam she's dealing with here this afternoon? Hannah's a veteran player. She's been in college a long time. Between the COVID year and a redshirt year, this is her sixth year as a collegiate athlete. One and one, and I think maybe more than anything else, you can sense that when you speak with her or when you hear her talk publicly. There's a maturity and a, a competitive fire that's not youthful about her. She's, in some ways, I mean this kindly, she's kind of the grizzled veteran of this team. <laughs> the grizzled veteran, I like that. When Hannah talks, the rest of the uh, rest of the Lakers listen. Oh yeah. One and two. And in addition to that, because she and the Lakers have been here before, I just don't think she gets phased by the moment. Now, that doesn't mean she's always going to execute perfectly, but I don't think there's a lot of anxiety or nervousness. Hannah's pretty darn confident, and you kind of like watching her strut around because she exudes that, well, that and presence. Yeah, yeah, she's in her sixth year. I mean, she's an elder stateswoman on the softball field. You know, we had a, a player on a team that I coached, we called her Grandma Ma because she was <laughs> she was an older player. But with, with that, I think Hannah understands. You get to a point where you see the game. Hannah sees the game completely different uh, with all the experience that she has for her age. And I think she understands too where her body and her arm need to rest at different times because of her age and how much she's throwing. Blair swings and misses. Great off speed. I think Beatis is fired up. <laughs> Inning ending strikeout. Hannah works around the single and the self-inflicted wound. Blair chases it out of the zone and a couple Nighthawks left aboard. Middle of two, no score. You know, Hannah Beatis has been so good this week that she's often been the most talked about storyline when she's in the circle. But I don't think we can go much further without giving appropriate praise to Kristen Davis because this young lady, when uh, North Georgia really needed to step up and, and get a big performance and prove, you know what, we're not just Sophie Mooney and Hannah Forehand offensively on a big stage. I know we've been here before, but we got to come up with something big. They gave Kristen the ball, and she said, I got you, no problem. And, and you know, she is definitely one of the keys day-to-day, -day, just going out and do her thing for North Georgia. And uh, 
<laughs> it's already starting here in the second inning as Georgia Blair looks up to see from Stacy Newton where that pa uh, where that uh, pitch was. So North Georgia and Grand Valley State both started this tournament 2 and 0. So they had a chance to take a deep breath on Saturday of the tournament. We had a slightly different structure this year. It's still eight teams, still double elimination. But instead of playing four games in a day every day, the first three days of the tournament, they changed things up where on day two, we actually had just the teams that won the first day playing. And of those teams, the teams that won those games, Grand Valley and North Georgia, they started 2-0. and They didn't play Saturday, and we had four elimination games on Saturday. This is smoked by Morgan Wagner, picked up on the short hop. Throw to first is not in time. <laughs> that is great hustle from Wagner because, wow, they tagged her out. How was Wagner put out at first base? Morgan Wagner should have been called safe at first base. She's allowed to run through the bag. I would think she's allowed to get up off of a dive, no? She's allowed to run through the bag, but let's see exactly what was called here as I was chuckling a little bit by the hustle of Wagner going down and just laying it out. I thought she was in, but evidently something else has transpired here. I mean, certainly good heads up play from Mariah yep. Wicker. She made a good accurate throw. Wow. Well, perhaps if she dives into the bag, she gives up her right to automatically run through safely. Let's see what happens here. Held, 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 held. Still come off the bag, comes off the bag. Okay, is she saying she came off the bag and she's out? That's the only thing that I can think of there. It's no different than running through the bag. Well, the they three consider umpires. that an attempt. We'll see what's going on. I'm going to reach out to Sally Walker, the head of the umpires there, because technically, as, as you pointed out, there's no rounding of the bag and making an attempt there. You're running through like you would run through to run through the bag. Yeah, I guess the only clarification, and, and perhaps this is a rule I don't know. If you dive into the bag at first, do you give up? your ability to go through the bag. And now they've overturned it, she's safe. Because yeah. yeah. I, I didn't see any difference of running through the bag. Well, understandably yeah. so, Mike Davenport's gonna come out and he's not particularly happy. No. So we do have replay available this week if this is the first time you've joined us all week long. Each coach has two challenges at their disposal. The umpires can also choose to look at a play again without being asked by either coaching staff. And most of the replays this week, to our umpiring crew's credit, most of the calls on the field have been upheld. Uh, and, and I think we should point out here, uh, Stacy Perry, and Destiny have the game here. But we've had really good umpires all week. Bill Gattuso, Kevin Condor, Jenna Bullion, also uh, part of this six umpire rotation they had game one in the series they also have to earn their way to the national tournament the same way the teams do and these are the best umpires across the country so ultimately look i think they've gotten the call right and mike davenport is just trying to get an explanation as to why the call was reversed and what he felt i'm not sure if there is something there that is challengeable but as it turns out, Grand Valley State does have a leadoff single. Okay. Well, hey, when you're in a, a, a tie game, whether it's scoreless or not, when you're in a tie game, every base runner counts. It's a leadoff hit for Grand Valley State. One more time, though, great play by Mariah Wicker in right field to come up with that ball and quickly gun it to first. Forced Wagner to get over there quickly. Wagner, not much of a stolen base threat. She's one for two on the season, so I don't think she'll be off and rolling. Kelsey Camoris. Kelsey sitting 342 on the season, and she's been pretty good this week.
Given in four total, three for 12, but they've been timely hits. Grand Valley State with a tournament opening win, 10-2 over the Wilmington Wildcats back on Thursday. On Friday, they walked off Texas Tyler, 2-1 in the ninth inning. Lydia Goble, a game-winning hit. They had Saturday off, and then on Sunday, they walked off Central Oklahoma 3-2 on Caitlin Lynch's RBI single on an obstruction call at home plate. That was a controversial ending, but replay upheld the call. Morris back to the circle. They go to second for one. Relay is in time. 1-6-3, twin killing. Nice clean cherry hop here. Couldn't be any better. Being able to backhand flip. Nice come across with the feet. Good feet there by Perry. Got clarification as well from Sally Walker here on the call. And just as I suspected, whether you're running or sliding, you have the ability to go through the bag, which in turn, even if she came off the bag, it'd be no different than a base hit and going through. That was, uh, that's, was I, that I suspected that, but... Given that the call on the field there was out, I wondered if perhaps there was a rule that prevented that. Right back on the ground, Maddie Perry scoops it up and throws out Morgan Spicer. So Grand Valley State with the leadoff base hit to right field, the double play and ground out, and we are through two innings. North Georgia, maybe a little momentum after two. Both teams with an early base hit. Neither team able to bring anybody across through the first couple of innings. 9-1-2 due up for the Nighthawks. And what could be a national championship finale. If you're just joining us, Grand Valley State, after losing yesterday's game, they've got to sweep a doubleheader. North Georgia needs just one win to take this best of three and bring home some hardware. First pitch swinging, Gracie Mixon. Flies out into shallow left on a beautiful running grab by Lydia Goble. Sent out in that fierce form like it was yesterday afternoon after being overcast all day and Goble being able to go and, and make a nice angle to the ball. Calling off Hollister. Top of the order now and Lester struck out swinging in her first at bat. This one is fouled away. Wow. Somebody's guardian angel was paying attention. Because that almost really hurt. I mean, we're talking about two feet from that fan being hit in the back of the head. Thank goodness. Quickly one out here in the third. The 0-1 is on the ground toward the first baseman and past Camoris. Base hit right field. Throwing it around the diamond a little bit as Serencioni got it in past Kelsey. That bounced right over the base. I don't know, I think you got to make the play on this one. It's a little short hop, it's a slow going ball there. No official word yet as they continue to review it. Lester aboard with one out for Perry. I'm with you, that's certainly a play Kamora should have made. She didn't touch the ball, but I think she would tell you. It was the, back, it was the backhand curtsy that yeah. sometimes gets you. <laughs> she would tell you at least nine out of 10 times that she picked that one. And they are gonna call it an error. Maddie Perry grounded out to the circle last time out. So, Two teams that have been known for their defense all season, especially the Lakers, who have the number one fielding percentage in the country. Two errors in the first three innings. We saw yesterday how uh, 
you know, mistakes like that can be so costly, whether they're errors on the scoreboard or not. Yesterday, that five-run fifth for North Georgia came about because of a leadoff error. It was the only, quote-unquote, error of the game. But all five runs in that frame happened after two outs in the inning and were all unearned against Beatis. I think what it comes down to is both of these offenses are plenty capable enough with 21 outs. You can't give them more than that. Eggshoff and Camoris pinched in on the corners. Goble and Spicer back in the middle. Perry watches high, two and two. Hollister, Lynch, and Serencioni medium deep and very spread apart out in the outfield. Awful lot of Nighthawk fans here after they had a big tailgate before the game started today. This one on the ground, back to the circle, and Beatis throws to first in time. So Perry retired for the second time on a ground out to the pitcher. And now they've got a runner in scoring position for Sophie Mooney. There are a few young ladies in this tournament that I think have tournament MVP honors within their sights, and one of them is at the plate here. Absolutely. Sophie's uh, versatility throughout this championship series week uh, has been instrumental to the path that North Georgia has taken. She can hit to all fields with authority. She's come in as a pitcher on two different occasions and been fantastic. Transfer from Georgia State having a big tournament. 1-0 is smoked past Goebel, base hit. Hollister coming up, throw to the plate is offline. North Georgia on the board. Sophie Mooney delivers again. <laughs> Better throw might have had her. Hard struck ball here, and with no doubt with uh, two outs. This is actually, you're, you're right. I mean, you, this is the middle of the infield throw. There really wasn't any umph on the backside of the throw by Hollister that was way up the line. Almost a little surprised, too, that at that point, seeing that there wasn't a cutoff in line there as well to possibly try to hang up Mooney over at first base. Sophie Mooney with 71 RBIs, just moved into second place nationally this year. Behind the young lady who is currently talking to Coach Davenport, Hannah Forehand has driven in 81. Another unearned run against Hannah Biotis. Big swing and a miss. And look, if you're Grand Valley State, you kind of had to expect somewhere along the way the offense is going to get going. You don't feel like you're ever going to get shut out because it so rarely happens to them, and it's hard to hold North Georgia scoreless. So you just refocus here, try to keep it to one, and keep yourself in the game. And the Nighthawks figure out a way to make it hurt. One, two is fouled away. Wind is picking up at the moment. It's been swirling a little today. Now it's blowing left to right. Looking from behind home plate out to the outfield and maybe blowing out a smidge. Mostly across the field though. Cloud cover providing just a, a brief reprieve on this otherwise sunny day. Good pitch, little low, throw to second on the steal in time. Wagner from her knees threw Mooney out trying to swipe second. Thought it was a good jump from Mooney, but Morgan Wagner with an absolute seed down to second base. Nighthawks get on the board though. Mooney's RBI single gives North Georgia the one nothing lead. Oh, 
foul, bottom of three. North Georgia got a huge double play in the second inning after a leadoff base hit. And they turned it into a little good fortune with an unearned run in the top of the third. So the Nighthawks playing from out front with a little face paint, chest paint, whatever you want to call all of that. <laughs> I love the passion. Bottom third of the order for the Lakers. Starts with Hannah Hollister. And it takes a called strike. I haven't seen the wind whip like that here all week. You get a shot of the flag out in center field. You talk about it rising quickly all of a sudden. Yeah, it, is it is blowing out pretty hard. If Hollister can yeah. put one up in the air. Mariah Wicker home run yesterday out to straightaway center. I, I, I don't know that I would call it a wind blown home run. She hit it really well, but the fact that the wind didn't hold it up at all definitely helped. It was a good 10 or 12 feet over that fence in dead center from Wicker yesterday. 190 down the lines and 220 straight away center field. So there's a little extra room in the gaps. Hollister on the ground to second. Forehand throws to sink field in time. One out. <laughs> Libby Fair. Fair came in yesterday for the first time into the order after Eliana Island had been the designated player the first several games in this tournament. Coach Island. Callanahan telling us last night that, you know, uh, Fair has earned right to have this opportunity, the way that she's practiced and put herself in position. Well, Libby came up with an RBI yesterday. She hit the ball pretty hard once. One and one. Grand Valley State, regular season champs, but they did not win the GLIAC tournament, losing twice to Wisconsin Parkside. But they got it figured out for the Midwest Regional. They've shown a, an ability to win tight games all postseason. They've had several one-run victories. 2-1 is in there. They beat UMSL 2-1 in the regional opener. And after beating Saginaw Valley State 6-0, the regional championship game was a 1-0 win. 2-2 to Fair, just missed the inside corner. In the Super Regionals in Indianapolis, Grand Valley with wins of 3-1 and 4-3 over UIndy. And after that big explosive win to start the Division II College World Series here over Wilmington, they beat Texas Tyler and Central Oklahoma in one run walk-off fashion. So my point is, being down a run here isn't necessarily uncomfortable. They've had tense moments for the last several weeks. Payoff pitch to Fair. On the ground left side, Perry the shortstop deep in the hole. Hurried, but not quite in time. Great stretch from Sinkfield. Olivia looking at Perry Owens saying, I thought we had her. We'll see if that's actually the case or if they choose to take a look. Yeah, it was actually a good call. This is a ball very deep in the hole on Perry. You see it almost handcuffs her. I'm a little bit surprised that she doesn't uh, charge that ball there. Uh, I think if she's able to charge it, it becomes a much closer play uh, at first base and the potential for an out, but backing up deep in the hole in the infield. Good hustle there by Fair, and now a pinch run. Lexis McCullough, senior off the bench, going to pinch run for Fair. Lexis can run really well, so she stands in on first base as Megan Kennigshoff climbs in the box. First pitch bounces well in front of home plate. Kenny schoff has been a really good hitter this week. Can she deliver here and get something going for the Lakers? They now have two base hits here. First couple of innings. No time to waste. Missed the bottom of the zone, not by much. Good pitch. 2-0.
Two to one. Kristen Davis, transfer from Kennesaw State. Junior from Calhoun, Georgia. Part of the all-conference team. She is a very, very impressive pitcher. Apparently that missed the zone, three balls and a strike. I mentioned earlier that they handed her the ball when things got tough against Texas Tyler after losing to the Patriots 3-1 in their first game a couple of days ago. Kenny Shaw fouls one toward her dugout. So it became an elimination game between North Georgia and Texas Tyler to actually get to this uh, championship series. And when Davis got the ball, she threw a complete game shutout. Four hits in that one. Worked out of a couple of tough jams early, but mostly smooth sailing. On the ground, high stab. Mixon gets the leadoff run. So McCullough is put out. 5-4 at second base. Good job by Gracie at third. That was a that high hop turned out to be a real high hop that nearly chopped over her head. Able to stay with it. And again, that's an advantage, I think, that defensively a little bit uh, North Georgia has the advantage on. They're, they're accustomed to more southern and east coast teams are accustomed to playing on this type of a surface. Green Valley State is more accustomed to playing about 15, only 15 games a year, roughly on a turf surface. Back to the top of the order now in Caitlin Lynch. Lynch fouls it at the plate. I mentioned earlier that Davis is 19 and one. Her one loss was the very first appearance of the year back on February 4th. Had a tough showing against West Alabama. Gave up a couple home runs, walked four, just wasn't her day. And gave up five runs over two and two-thirds innings. So she hasn't lost in almost four months. Lynch into the leaping glove of Davis, inning over. Grand Valley State got a base hit with one out, but once again could not bring anybody into scoring position. And the Nighthawks have a small advantage Three of the books in Chattanooga. Get a re-entry in the one... Uh, one substitution we had last half inning, so Liberty Fair is back as the DP for the Lakers. Means Alexis McCullough's service has wrapped up in this game. We are starting the top of the fourth. North Georgia, a run on two hits with no errors. They've stranded two. Grand Valley State, no runs, two hits and two errors, one of which allowed a run to come home. And they've stranded just one. Brendan Gulick, Leah Secondo with you for game number 15 this week. Might it be the last one of the year? Base hit inside the bag at third. Excellent way to start this inning for Hannah Forehand. She's got extra bases. Pitching it down the line is Hannah Forehand. As the corners off the bags just enough, respecting that the number four hitter isn't gonna lay one down, trying to take that base hit away and forehand finding the spot to get it to sneak through. 16th double for forehand this year. Olivia Sinkfield bunts it and it's touched in foul ground. Number forehand led off this inning because Sophie Mooney was caught stealing to end the third. So forehand Sinkfield and Blair scheduled here in the fourth. North Georgia not only scoring in the third, but right away threatening here in the top of the fourth inning. Sinkfield once again showed bunt, but Piatis way upstairs.
All of a sudden, moments are getting a little more tense for Grand Valley. Good bunt from Sinkfield. Biata scoops it up and gets it over to Spicer at first. And he's covering the bag just in the nick of time. Wow. That was close. Well, Sinkfield made it known that she was pretty unhappy with that decision. She better be careful here. Looks a lot closer when it's slowed down like that, doesn't it? Let's see if Mike Davenport decides to use it. He does. Well, it certainly was close, and I can see why Olivia might have felt that way, but you got to be careful to control your emotions. All right, let's take a slow down look and see what we can see. Well, it still looks just as close as the yeah. original call. And it's hard to see exactly where the ball is. Know, from that angle, it in that angle, that angle favors her, right? The other angle yep, she's from safe. our third base camera. She, uh, <laughs> she is going to be called safe, I think. I think that's clear and convincing enough, but we'll find out. Either way, four hands at third base. And Sydney Blair's got to lock in here because she's got a big at bat coming. Grand Valley State trying to dig down deep and figure out how to pull a rabbit out of the hat here in the fourth. Keep this thing a one-run game. And to Hannah's credit, she's done that a couple of times this week. It hasn't been total domination. It's been a little bit more bend but don't break. There's the overturn call. First and third, nobody out for Sydney Blair. Blair delivered yesterday. Runners off for second, uncontested. Stolen base for Sinkfield. I love Sinkfield's uh, motion going into second base. She had that stop, drop, and roll look in her in her <laughs> eyes, but then knew that she did the throw wasn't coming through. Stayed up. <laughs> was ready to dive, but yeah. never needed. All right, so the force play is taken out. And it's so difficult here, right, Brennan? Because you've got another lefty batter on deck in in uh, Wicker. Uh, you know, difficult to pitch around her too. And I think this is the conversation that. Coach Callahan wants to have here. Just making sure everybody understands with no outs, first base open, where the ball is going. You know that if anything to the outfield, they're probably going to press the envelope if it's deep enough to try to push that second run across. And that's kind of their DNA, right? Yeah. I mean, they've done that yeah. all year. It's yeah. not just, hey, do we have a lot of stolen bases? Right. It's how in the world can can you handle yourself defensively when we are always trying to take that extra base? That's the mentality for the Nighthawks. Puts a lot of pressure on you. You gotta, gotta make every play that comes your way. Leadoff double, an overturned infield single, and a stolen base have opened up the top of the fourth. Blair on the ground is short. Goble had only one choice, get the out at first. Forehand scores, an RBI ground out makes it 2 nothing. Good hard chop ball into the ground. And now Mariah Wicker 
with Sinkfield at third and one out. Two-nothing is certainly not insurmountable if you're a Laker fan. Three-nothing might feel a little different. There's a big at bat from Mariah Wicker. Not only has North Georgia scored first, they've also quote unquote scored next. And if they can do that with multiple runs, they're gonna put themselves substantially out front of Grand Valley State. Too early to start counting outs, but Kristen Davis has looked really good. Wicker fights off another one. Wicker over the top, it's in the dirt for strike three. Wagner gets in the pickle, safe at the plate. Oh, an absolutely brutal mistake for the Lakers. That's exactly how the Nighthawks play this game. Suffocating pressure on the base paths. Wicker all the way down to second, it's three nothing. Baited into the play, right? They always tell you, go for the out, get the sure out. But Wagner's like, you know what? She's just too close here. I'm going to take a chance. Clearly safe at home. And then all of a sudden, Wicker with her blistering speed, now in scoring position at second base. Wow. A strikeout wild pitch that allows Wicker to reach. If you're Wagner and you're gonna pump fake that. As Blair sends it in the air to shallow right, Wicker tagging. Serencioni makes the catch and Wicker holds up. Out number two. If you're Wagner and you wanna lure her into a rundown, you gotta, you gotta either pump fake or, or run at her, make her commit before you actually throw the ball like that. And you're absolutely right. Uh, you know from your days as being a catcher, you want to get back, get her back towards the base that she's trying to get to. I mean, there's an element of, at some point, you almost just swallow hard and say, you know, this stinks, it's a wild pitch, whatever, and, and she's going to reach. Meanwhile, the uh, Grand Valley State pitching coach, Jen Rivera, has come out to Beatis and was looking at, Beatis' hand, Destiny Robinson, third base, uh, third base umpire there too. And I, I'm Maybe glad that a blister or something. Jen Rivera actually came out because uh, that's one of the hidden gems for all of these teams, right? The assistant coaches. Rivera was on that uh, 2002 national championship team. She was a sophomore pitcher on that team and a big piece to Coach Callahan's staff. Couldn't say enough last night. Uh, Coach Callahan said, you know, she goes, you know, Jen Rivera could be anywhere coaching at a higher level. And uh, Jen means so much to the Lakers staff. Madison Simmons is the batter, pinch hitting for Gracie Mixon here. Wicker at second, two outs, already two across in the top of the fourth. Good pitch. There is some action down in the bullpen for Grand Valley State. Ashley Playtech, who has not yet appeared this week, is loosening. Yadis has thrown every pitch for the Lakers. Just off the plate. These teams were, for whatever it's worth, seeded third and fifth coming into the week. And last year, the five seed won the whole thing. Roger State. Simmons walks, first and second now with two outs. Top of the lineup once again in Lester. First time through wasn't all that successful, but the second time through the order for the Nighthawks, they've made it hurt. 
Two across in the fourth. Could they add more? Lester fouls it away. She reached on the error by Camoris in the third inning. And then came around to score on Sophie Mooney's RBI single. Right back to Biotis, who has two outs and goes to first to finish off the fourth. Two runs, two hits, no errors, and two runners left on base for the Nighthawks, who manufacture a run on an RBI ground out and make it happen on the base pads too. North Georgia out front 3-0. If the Lakers ever needed to respond offensively, it is right now. They've given up three runs through the first four innings of this game. They have not played in one of their own. A couple of base hits the last two innings, but they have not gotten someone to scoring position. As Serencioni grounds out on the first pitch of the inning, one gone. Grand Valley State sending their 12th batter to the plate now, Lydia Goebel. Three young ladies have reached base, but none of them have even gotten to second. Yeah, this is a, this is a big inning for Grand Valley. They've got to be able to to get something. They, they've got to come away. I feel as though they've got to come away with a run here because everything that they try to mount has been stopped in some way or another. Goble in the air to right, very playable for Wicker. And Lydia Goble twice has flown out. Now Morgan Wagner. Want to know? High and tight, two and zero. Oh. Wagner had the first base hit, and if you weren't here for it live, she singled the right field. Mariah Wicker came up with the ball and fired it to sink field at first base. Wagner went diving in head first to try to beat the throw. And she did, but as she slid past the base, she was actually tagged. And the home plate umpire, Stacy Newton, who was on that call there coming up the line, called her out. Grand Valley State challenged, and it was overturned. How about that for a quick inning? Only a few pitches from Kristen Davis. Two ground outs and a fly out. And right now, North Georgia is on cruise control. They're three innings away from winning a national championship, but there's lots of game in front of us. the top of the fifth inning with the Nighthawks out front three to nothing there have not been many teams around the country the last decade that have been consistently more successful than UNG they obviously won it all in 2015 but look how close they've been over the last few years only once have they not gotten out of the regional and that was in 2019 when they lost to young Harris they've at least been in the supers if not into this national championship uh, setting. By the way, the last two years when they lost in the semis, Cal State Dominguez Hills and Biola 
Both had really, really good teams, and ultimately they both finished as national runner-up those two years. Yep. Mike Davenport telling us, aside from that 2020 year, which is obviously COVID, that that 2021 season was a was a uh, 2022 season actually was a bonus year. He felt uh, having such a young squad just got in the right place at the right time. Perry leads off with a bunt. Good play by the third baseman Kenny Shaw. One out. A nice hop, good charge on the playoff, the short hop actually. Gun down period first. Mooney one for two, had the RBI single in the third. As Beatis dips one in there for a called strike. The Lakers certainly like facing Mooney when there's nobody else on base. Right back to the pitcher. Miatis makes the snare. Two outs. Hannah Forehand now, who started the fourth inning with a double to the left field corner and came home to score the go-ahead run. High and tight. Didn't miss by much, 2-0. Oh. Two and one. Well, I think Hannah needs a quick inning here. She hasn't had one since the first. Been working around some traffic as time is called when one of the gates popped open down the... Uh, Right field line, get that thing closed quickly. On the flip side, what do you think needs to change about the approach at the plate for the Lakers? I, I don't think anything really needs to change. It may be an adjustment in the box to kind of try to be more aggressive, but I think you need to give a lot of credit here as to what's going on in the circle from Davis and what she is doing. I'm gonna be, be anxious to see, I'll hold that thought for a moment. Just got in there. Base hit, short right center field for forehand. I'm going to be anxious to see when we come back out next inning if if uh, Coach Davenport's going to continue to ride Davis because he likes where she's putting the ball and the movement on the ball, or if he's going to try to maybe look to see about changing the eyes and the plane just a little bit to keep these uh, Laker batters uh, off balance and continue on going with what he's doing. Well, Davis yeah. so far is cruising. First pitch to sink field, misses outside. I think the string continues for Davis, right, until possibly we start to see consecutive, maybe consecutive hard struck balls. Sure. But um, that certainly will be had in the conversation between Davis and, and Blair and Coach. In the air, shallow right field. Hollister comes in a step and puts it away to end the inning. Kristen Davis back to work. When we come back, we're in the middle of the fifth. Nighthawks lead it three to nothing. Frost Stadium, the site of our twenty twenty three national championship tournament. Just want to take a moment to say thank you to our gracious hosts this week. The uh, folks from Visit Chattanooga, the, the Chattanooga uh, Tourism Bureau here locally, and from Lee University. So many of their staff members have put things on uh, for these athletes this week, but also made it a pleasure to work and uh, enjoy this environment. There is so much work that goes in behind the scenes to putting on a tournament. Big thanks to the National Committee for everything that they've done. It's been a great tournament week. 
And whether we have one or two games today, just want to make sure we had a chance to say thank you because uh, it's been a first-class event, and I know these student-athletes have really enjoyed it. Kelsey Camorris, Morgan Spicer, Hannah Hollister. 5-6-7 in the order due up for the Lakers. On the ground, right back to Davis. One out. And Kristen's numbers are, are nice so far, but I think the thing that's jumping out to me more than anything else, there have only been two balls hit in the air against her, and both of them are Lydia Goble. Every other out has been a ground out. Yeah, but chopped in the ground. Chopped in the ground. Of course, it was one double play that Kamora hit into to end the second inning. But 10 ground outs through four and a third for the Lakers. Well, you could tell just even by that last at bat by Kamara, uh, you know, her curveball is working, and it's and that was a, a nice drop on the inside part of the plate there. But when her curveball is working, you're anticipating where it's going, good spin, and all of a sudden, boop, it goes out, and and now you're just trying to get a bat on it to make some contact, and that has transpired a couple of times today in her favor. And much of it hasn't been very strong contact. They're upstairs, one and two. She's now thrown 51 pitches, of which 31 are called strikes. I guess they could have been swinging strikes too, but 51-31, pretty darn efficient. That just missed the outside corner, not by much. <laughs> wow. Georgia Blair, the way she brought that ball right down, and actually where she brought it down in, we'll see it here, is uh, is kind of, it, it's a little this evening where we are, but uh, that ball is pretty fat, and uh, I can't imagine that no part of it caught that corner. Spicer gets rid of one. <laughs> two and two. Grand Valley State, if they want to turn the lineup card back over to their better hitters, they're going to need a couple of base hits. Certainly capable, but starting to run out of time. Spicer in the air, foul ground playable for Lester. Two outs. And again, you know, kind of a floppy bat, not whipping it through because it's like, oh my goodness, I've got to get it. I've got to get something on it. It's not taking the trajectory that I thought it was, getting to the plate. Hollister grounded out to second last time up, 0 for 1. Since Kenigshoff reached safely on a fielder's choice, the last six in a row have been put down in order. On the ground left side, Perry to her backhand. Throws from her knees. Good idea, good effort, but a base hit. And yet another one that wasn't hit all that hard, just placed well. Pop, pop deep in the hole there. And even with a lot of zippity doo -dah on that from that spot in the hole, would have been difficult to make the play. And Fair kind of with that good stick last time up, working that left side of the field. Let's see where she goes here. Well, Grand Valley State has been carried by its upperclassmen this year. North Georgia has just one senior on its entire roster in first baseman Olivia Sinkfield. They've been bolstered a little more by some additions through the transfer portal and some young players that have proven ready for big spots. They're expecting to basically bring this whole team back in 2024. Caught the corner two and one. Think about the year that Sidney Blair has had stepping into the outfield as a freshman, and certainly Jolie Lester as a sophomore. 
once Mallory Parker went down with an injury. Fair in the air. This one might be playable. It is. Lester makes the catch. That ends the inning. A couple of flyouts in foul ground on the left side for the Lakers. We are moving to the sixth. It's starting to feel a little more real, but North Georgia's still got work to do. We are moving to the top of the sixth. Three runs, five hits, no errors. And five runners left on base for UNG. No runs, three hits, two errors, and just two left for the Lakers. North Georgia scoring in the third and fourth innings. It's not necessarily been a big hit kind of day. North Georgia just has one extra base hit, the leadoff double from forehand. Other than that, it's been singles, aggressive base running. They've only got one steal, and on that play, there was no throw down to second. It was basically an uncontested stolen base. But they have made it happen on the base paths, taking an extra base when they can. The third inning, they capitalized off a Grand Valley error. Nighthawk pressure's been solid so far as Blair swings over the top. Two and one. Last time up, Sydney had an RBI ground out that gave UNG the lead. And in her first at bat, she rifled one through the middle of the infield. Well, Morgan Wagner needed a second, but she's okay. Yadis has now thrown 80 pitches. And to Hannah's credit, I know they're trailing 3 nothing, but North Georgia's only got two hits in 10 chances with a runner on base. It's not like this thing has gotten out of control because it's been a hit parade. Three of the five UNG base hits have come with two outs. It just goes to show you again that there's different ways Right to the shortstop, Goble, one out. To score in this great game of softball. And uh, for North Georgia, it always, doesn't, always doesn't always have to be the long ball or the big hit. Wow. Uh, I think they may be calling catcher's interference. Was that the call? Uh, I'm not sure. That was odd. Mariah oh, Wicker no. is the batter. Yep. Home plate umpire Stacy Newton went over and told Dana Callahan something about an obstruction call. Well, it was a delayed dead ball signal, and, I, and it 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 either had something to do it either had something to do with the pitch. Um, I don't believe it was catcher's interference. It, if we have an opportunity, I know it's sometimes difficult while we're in game like this to go back to it, but. If it was an illegal pitch and it was struck, then it, the batter has taken the liberty to, to take that hit, right? Or take whatever. So. Wicker bunts it out in front of the circle. Close play at first, but it's in time. Kenig Schaff throws her out as Spicer digs it out. It was during Wicker's at bat last time up that the Night Hawks came across with that third run when Sinkfield came home from third on the strikeout wild pitch. Wagner tried to throw back to third base. And instead of breaking back for third, Sinkfield came home. Bases clear, two outs. Georgia Blair 0 for 2. Big swing and a miss. Georgia was trying to go uptown on that one. <laughs> Cutter on that inside part of the plate. Does not get cheated. No. Nope. 
Hannah saying, you know what? I had good success there. I'm going back in the same spot. Change the eye level a little bit that time. Blair got a piece of it. 9-1-2 for the Lakers, scheduled to bat in the sixth. Kenningshoff, Lynch, and Serencioni. Swing and a miss, strike three. Got her to end the inning as Blair chased one down and out of the zone. First one, two, three inning for Hannah Biotis since the first. Nighthawks still in control. Grand Valley State's got to get the bats going now. All right, bottom of the sixth. Do or die time for the Lakers. Got to get the sticks going if they're going to make a comeback because they've got a hot hitter at the plate leading things off in Kenningshoff. And she could set the table for the top of the order. Kristen Davis has quietly had a brilliant performance. Scattered three hits, no more than one per inning over her first five. No walks, no strikeouts, 60 pitches through five innings. And as we referenced earlier, it's been pretty tough to hit the ball in the air against her. Obviously, you've got plenty of ways you can get on base hitting the ball on the ground, but there just hasn't been a whole lot of really sharp contact against Davis. Pounding the zone just like that. That's pounding the corner right there. On the ground, right back to her. One out. <laughs> Caitlin Lynch, 0 for 2 with a couple of ground outs. Back to the circle. Five balls have been put in play. Back to Kristen Davis through the first five and a third innings. She has fielded her position quite well. Strike one to Lynch. And even though Tybee Denton has pitched fine and was, you know, theoretically their, their better pitcher, right? She, you, you lead off with the best you got. I don't really know how you can, you know, ignore what Davis has done. That is a fair ball. And Lynch beat it out at first base. I guess what I'm trying to say is Davis might have performed better thus far than, than even Ty B has, and Denton's been great. Yeah, I think, you know, to, you know Ty B is more of the, that rise ball pitcher. Um, there's no question about it, but Grand Valley State, <clears throat> excuse me, has had a little bit more success overall in this tournament with the rise ball pitching. And um, Denton and Mooney, keep it low in the zone. Sorencioni singles to short, and now if you're the Lakers, you've got to make it happen. Two on, one out for your best hitter, All-American shortstop Lydia Goble. Well, this is scripted pretty good, isn't it? Tying run is at the plate. North Georgia recognizing the gravity of the moment, so Aaliyah White out of the first base dugout to chat with Kristen. And Sophie Mooney is heading down to the bullpen to get loose just in case. First time all game, the Lakers have had two runners on at the same time, and Lydia Goble has just crushed the ball this week. That was her game winner against, or I should say that was uh, against Wilmington. She also had a RBI uh, game winner to right field. She's taking the ball with power the other way, but she can really turn on it too. Key hits, and she knows exactly where she needs to put the ball in running, runners, running position. And what I like about 
Lydia. She's brought up the mentality of you know, ripping the home run. She's looking just to put the ball in play, make good contact wherever it is in the zone. Good student of the game, that's for sure. Ball one. Trouble has flown out to right field twice. Both of them have been reasonably well hit. Wind is blowing out. First time in a while, North Georgia fans have been a little nervous. Goble scorches one oh. into the glove of Maddie Perry. What a play! Maddie Perry gets a good jump on this ball as it is fading away on her into the hole. And somehow, it's amazing actually that she got a good grasp on that ball, Brendan, to hold on to it. Two outs for Morgan Wagner. <laughs> Morgan Wagner getting a little bit of uh, respect here with two outs. Outfield back straight away. Ricker, Ricker a couple steps in, but as we are well aware, has that great speed out in right field. Wagner checks her swing and apparently missed the zone. <laughs> Two balls and no strikes. And just because Lydia Gobel lined out doesn't mean the Laker hope is over. Wagner's got some pretty good pop in her bat. It's not quite as good as Miss Gobel. North Georgia needed a second to mentally reset. They didn't like that call. Two on, two out, three nothing Nighthawks. Three and oh. Not difficult to see exactly where that came across the plates. Which kind of blocked us out just a little bit. Taking all the way, a called strike, three and one. Three, two. Fights it off foul. <laughs> Critical moment for Grand Valley State. They got a pair of one out singles. Wagner on the ground to short. Perry throws out Morgan Wagner. And North Georgia is just three outs away defensively from a national championship. We are headed to the seventh next on NCAA.com. North Georgia with a 3-0 lead as we start the seventh inning. They need to win just once today to clinch a national championship. Let's go, 
A run in the top of the third. Sophie Mooney, an RBI single. They got two in the fourth, one on an RBI ground out from Sidney Blair, and the second one on a defensive mistake when Mariah Wicker struck out on a wild pitch. Morgan Wagner, instead of throwing to first base, saw the runner sink field at third, bluff toward home. Wagner took a couple of steps toward her and then threw to third base. And Sinkfield charged for home and scored diving ahead of a play back to the dish. 3-0 UNG. Anna Biotis, is she taking the circle for the last time as a collegiate athlete? Her career has been dazzling. Her performance this week, incredibly impressive. But North Georgia has had her number yesterday and today. The Nighthawks against Biotis over the first 12 innings offensively against her. They've scored 10 runs on 14 hits against a young lady that completely stymied the rest of the field. Mixon, Lester, and Perry do up here in the seventh. And now Coach Davenport comes over and says, hey, let's have a little conversation, Gracie. The Lakers with Camorris, Spicer, and Hollister scheduled to bat in the bottom of the inning. One and two. Mixon has popped out. She chases one up and out of the zone there. Strike three. She was pinch hit for last at bat, so Mixon 0 for 2. To the top of the order now for the Nighthawks and Jolie Lester after Beatus strikes out her fifth. Lester fights it off. She is struck out, grounded out, reached on an error, and scored. Smoked into the left field corner. Loud foul ball. Lester down to the count, no balls and two strikes. On the ground to second, Spicer got her. Two gone for Maddie Perry. UNG fans trying to get behind Perry to come up with what would be her first hit of the week. Maddie's defense has been very solid today. Chops this one foul. One and one. You know, the patience you have to have against a pitcher like Beatis. If you move up in the box, you take a chance of not catching that ball before it breaks, and you'd catch it at the wrong spot. Her ball breaks so late. You've got to be back further. On the ground to Goble to end the inning. Piatis retires the last seven in a row to get through the sixth and seventh unscathed. And now it's time for Grand Valley State to figure out if they can muster up any kind of energy. Well, we'll keep it here and show you some highlights during the break. Grand Valley State has a couple of walk-off wins this week against Texas Tyler in the ninth inning. 
Goble singled to right field. This capped off a big 2-1 win and put them to 2-0 in the winner's bracket. And then they followed it up against Central Oklahoma. In the seventh inning, Caitlin Lynch dropped that one in front of Shaley Odom in center field. Obstruction was called on the plate here. And it allowed the game-winning run to come across when Hollister scored. Grand Valley won that one 3-2. And they're going to need something similar and magical in this seventh inning if they're going to keep this thing going and fight to a seventh game. So, seventh game. How about, a, uh, how about fighting to the bottom of the seventh inning, try to force a third game in this series? See if they can do it. Camoris, Spicer, and Hollister. As Kristen Davis goes back to work. Davis has been terrific. Six innings, no runs, five hits, no walks, no punch outs. Morris grounded out twice. Once it was a double play. And she fights this one back into the screen. See that lazy swing on that first strike of that pitch again the anticipation and uh, really commend Kristen Davis on where she has put the ball today to to really baffle the solid hitting team popped up to the catcher one out Georgia Blair squeezes the lazy little pop up and the Nighthawks are two outs away three nothing in the seventh as Morgan Spicer climbs in 2013, Coach Davenport and his staff approached Chattanooga and said, you know, you guys should really consider putting in a bid to host this national championship. In the air towards short, Maddie Perry's got it. Two outs. And Hannah Hollister represents the last hope. And after some bumpy road over the last 10 years, finally, this championship has come to Chattanooga and North Georgia in what is almost a fairy tale on the verge of winning a title. Hollister one for two. She is singled to short and grounded to second. Hannah checks her swing. Doesn't matter. Strike called. The Nighthawks. Have been unbelievable. 63 and 7. They won nearly 40 games in a row at one point this year. Upstairs, one and one. North Georgia fans are on their feet. Missed by much, two balls and a strike. Their depth, despite their youth, pretty amazing. Hollister back to Davis. She throws to first. North Georgia, you are the national champions. Mike Davenport and his staff celebrating with his team. Got a quick ice bath there as the trophy is presented to North Georgia. What a job in the circle today. I, you know, you, you talked about different hitting performances and different hitting teams, and I thought, you know, gosh, there's going to be a huge challenge ahead with this solid Lakers squad and their batting order and the depth 
of the pitching staff, the running of the bases by North Georgia, the difference in the end. Congratulations to Grand Valley State. Yet another exceptional season representing their school. The colors they wear. Great week for them as well, and congratulations. The second national championship now for North Georgia. Yeah, not only their second, but their second this decade. Yeah. They won it back uh, less than 10 years ago. And again, you start to think about who the real powers are in Division II softball on an annual basis. And there's just no way to have that conversation without including North Georgia. It is so hard to win a national title. There are some incredibly good teams around the country. And the consistency with which the Nighthawks have performed time and time again, so impressive. 272 programs this year that played Division II softball. And for the second time in program history, the Nighthawks are the last team standing. Final line score, North Georgia, three runs, five hits, no errors. They stranded five. Grand Valley State scoreless today, five hits, two errors. They left four. Kristen Davis, take a bow. A complete game shutout in the national championship. Scattered five hits. She didn't walk anyone or strike anyone out. Needed just 82 pitches to get through seven innings. Not much hard contact against her, only a couple including that screaming liner from Goble on, frankly, I thought the defensive play of the game when Maddie Perry went lunging to her right and pulled it out of the air to keep this thing 3-0. That was in the sixth inning. Losing pitcher, it's tough luck again for Hannah Biotis. Seven innings, she gave up three runs, two earned on five hits. Struck out five, walked one, 101 pitches and 68 strikes for Biotis. No save, time of the game, an hour and 37 minutes, and the official attendance today is 900. What a spectacular day. A great celebration of Division II softball. It's been a terrific tournament throughout the course of this week, and again, one more big thank you to all of our hosts here in Chattanooga. Before we wrap things up, I want to at least share with you because uh, we just uh, just found out who the all-tournament team is before they start the trophy presentation. The uh, two pitchers on the all-tournament team are Tatum Goff and Hannah Biotis from Texas Tyler and Grand Valley. All-tournament catcher is North Georgia catcher Georgia Blair. Four infielders, Lydia Goble and Morgan Spicer from Grand Valley. Central Oklahoma senior third baseman Shayla Harper and North Georgia second baseman Hannah Forehand. Three outfielders, Texas Tyler's J.T. Smith. Central Oklahoma outfielder Riley Lemus and Sydney Blair, who played really well in left field. I beg your pardon, in uh, center field for North Georgia. A couple of at-large selections on the all-tournament team. Sophie Mooney from North Georgia and Cal State San Marcos sophomore Mackenzie Giuliano along with North Georgia junior Kristen Davis. The all-tournament team most outstanding player is North Georgia's Sophie Mooney. She was unbelievable all week offensively and when she had a chance uh, to take the circle a couple of times. What a tournament, what a game, yeah. and uh, a, a worthy champion. Yeah, absolutely. Best of the best we saw this week, and so many great plays. You know, you, you run through the great defensive plays on the effort. Congratulations once again to all eight teams participating to our national champion, North Georgia. Sophie Mooney, an RBI single in the third, and then a couple runs in the fourth. That's all North Georgia needed to get it done this afternoon. We're going to step aside here from our commentary, but uh, we will continue to carry our live streaming coverage for you through the end of this championship trophy presentation. First, the runner-up individual awards for Mary Grand Jane Valley Goodman. State, who finishes the season at 48 and 8. North Georgia, your champs this Morgan year, Spicer. 64 and 7. Congratulations to the Nighthawks. Liberty for Leah Secondo and our entire production crew, I'm Brendan Gulick. Thanks for a great week here in Chattanooga. Congratulations, the North Georgia Nighthawks for the second time in program history. Megan they Kingshaw. are the national champions. Hannah Hollister. Paige Lagaki. Ashley Playtech. <laughs> Joanna Serencioni. <laughs> Caitlin.
Cleveland Lynch. Alexis McCullough. Morgan Wagner. Lydia Goble. Hannah Biotis. Athletic trainer Layla Alley. Assistant coach Aaron Daldos. Assistant coach Jen Rivera. And the head coach of the Lakers, Dana Callahan. Congratulations to Grand Valley State on a great season. Let's give all these outstanding student athletes, coaches, and staff a round of applause. And now we present the 2023 Division II Softball All-Tournament Team. We ask that if you are present, come forward to be congratulated by National Committee Chair Val Sivastrini. From UT Tyler, junior Tatum Goff. From Central Oklahoma, senior Shayla Harper. From UT Tyler, redshirt sophomore outfielder JT Smith. From the University of Central Oklahoma, freshman outfielder Riley Lemos. From California State University, San Marcos, sophomore Mackenzie Giuliano. Pitcher from Grand Valley State University, redshirt senior, Hannah Biotis. <laughs> Infielder from Grand Valley State University, a redshirt senior, Lydia Goebel. An infielder from Grand Valley State University, sophomore Morgan Spicer. A catcher from the University of North Georgia, junior Georgia Blair. A junior infielder from the University of North Georgia, Hannah Forehand. A freshman outfielder from the University of North Georgia, Sydney Blair. A junior from the University of North Georgia, Sophie Mooney. A junior pitcher from the University of North Georgia, Kristen Davis. And the 2023 Most Outstanding Player, as voted by members of the media, is from the University of North Georgia, Sophie Mooney. <laughs> Fans, let's hear it for your 2023 All-Tournament Team.
And now the 2023 NCAA Division II Softball National Champion, finishing with a record of 64 wins and seven losses, the North Georgia Nighthawks. Will the following individuals please come forward to receive your awards? Caitlin Johnston. Madison Cosgrove. Sarah York. Katie Ward. Mary Seal Brumby. Caroline Branch. Sydney Blair. Haley Cummings. Grayson Perry. Sadie Johnson. Aniston Wright. Jolie Lester. Mallory Parker. Madison Simmons. Delaney Heberlin. Mariah Wicker. Madison Perry. Gracie Mixon. Sophie Mooney. Hannah Forehand. Kristen Davis. Georgia Blair. Tybee Denton. <laughs> Olivia Sinkfield. <laughs> Assistant coach, Aaliyah White. And head coach, Mike Davenport. <laughs> Will head coach Mike Davenport and the team captains please come forward to accept the trophy.
Congratulations to the Nighthawks, your 2023 NCAA Division II Softball National Champions.